give the Lord praise. All right, brother Jeff, you're going to be the Praise the Lord. Isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord today? Amen. 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 What a joy it is to be here. Let's just give God a great big hand clap. Thank Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm glad that I serve a risen Savior today. I, know I cannot go and visit his tomb. I can't go and visit his grave. You can go to all these other five world leaders, religious leaders, and you can look at their grave, and they're still there. But I'm telling you, my God arose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. All right, I want you to do this. It's wonderful to have you here. Uh, some of you, this may be your first time. Thank you so much. It may be your first time in a really, really long time. Thank you so much. Uh, we do appreciate you being here. It's wonderful to have you. I want you to do something real simple. Uh, if you've not been here before and this is your first time, just have a seat. Have a seat. These fellows are going to come and put something into your hand, packet of information. That means you're walking. There you go. Praise the Lord. Uh, they they got up way too early. They may have went to a sunrise service. I don't know. Uh, and so thank you for coming. Uh, I want you to do something. Just take a moment and fill uh, that information out, if you will. Uh, fill that out, and we'll get uh, that taken care of. And we're going to be praying with you and for you for any needs yeah. that you may have. There's a prayer request area there, and we certainly appreciate that. Here's what I want you to do. Uh, at, if you'll fill that out at the end of the service, uh, there's a desk out in the uh, lobby area there. Uh, we've got some of these brand new mugs, and uh, they're real nice, and we've got some treats in there for you. We want you to pick one of those up if you'll just take your information uh, to that desk there. Uh, they'll get that taken care of for you. And so let's welcome all of our first-time guests. Uh, thank you, Lord. Let me make a, an announcement before uh, we get to moving here. Uh, if you have a child... Uh, age uh, newborn through four years old. We do have a staff nursery uh, that's available. Uh, you can take advantage of that if you'd like to. Uh, if they're five to 12 years old, we have junior church over there, and we sure would love to have them. They'll have a wonderful time over there. And just at, right after the service, we'll have a lot of things going on. And so uh, we'll tell you about that right at, at, as the service goes on. Let's do this. Let's play a little bit. Uh, the musicians are playing. We're going to shake hands. The choir is coming up. And we're going to worship together.
Jesus today. Let's all stand the Lord of the house today as we worship the Lord together on Resurrection Sunday. I'm glad that my Redeemer, my Redeemer, I'm glad this song says it's my Redeemer because it's a personal relationship with Him this morning. Amen. Amen. Worship with us today.
place where Jesus can reach you. If you'll humble yourself, you'll find you don't need anything else. All you need is Him. When you find Him, you found it all. Amen.
big day. We've got plans, we've got ideas about what we're going to do afterward. But we didn't come here to leave. We came here to find out what God has for us today. And so church, I want to talk to you just for a second. Uh, let's forget about who's sitting here, who may not be here, or whatever. Let's forget about what's in the crock pot. And let's figure out what God is going to do in our hearts today. I don't want to come to a place like this. And I don't want for God to start moving and me not get the blessing that God has for me. I know that in, in every heart, God's wanting to do something today. You say, preacher, I know I'm saved, and I, I, that's really all there is to it. And, oh, no. There's a whole lot more to live in this Christian life than just knowing that you prayed some prayer uh, sometime. I need the power of God in my everyday walk. I need the power of God in my everyday life. I need the power of God. You know, the Bible said this in the book of Philippians, that I may know him. And the fellowship of his sufferings, we can know that we've heard about that. And the power of his resurrection. Let's live in resurrection power. Just because we think over here on Easter, I know
bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified. And the third day, rise again. And they remembered his words. Give me that next one, Brother Todd. Verse 6 said, He is not here, but is risen. I'm going to try to give you this just as briefly as I can. I shared with the church a little bit on Wednesday night. Uh, I, I was studying for this message. God gave me a different message for Wednesday. And uh, I, I wanna, I'm not going to re-preach that, but it just to kind of hit the highlights. In Exodus chapter 11 and Exodus chapter number 12, we find the story where the judgment of God was going to fall on Egypt. And there was a way that every person under the judgment of God could get out, could go free. The firstborn of every family would die. Of every cattle, of every family, not just babies, but the firstborn, no matter how old they were. The judgment was going to fall, and God said there's a way out of it. He said the blood of a lamb has to be shed. The blood of the lamb needs to be put over your doorpost, on your house. And everyone needs to be behind and underneath that blood. For when, when I pass over, I'll pass over you. Aren't you glad that God made a way for you? God made a way for me. If I got what I deserve, if you got what you deserve this morning, we'd all be in a place called hell. But Jesus took the wrath of the thrice holy God upon himself. I spoke about this just a little bit on Wednesday as the Lord, we've often heard the last supper. The Lord sat there with his disciples and he began to take the elements of the Passover meal, what we call the Last Supper. And when he did so, it was a tradition, it was something they had been doing for over a thousand years, Brother Joe. For over a thousand years, the script was the same, the actions were the same. In fact, the very meal that they, 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 they were eating is set up, and it's called Seder for a reason. It's, it's an order to it. And when Jesus, Brother Sean, when Jesus took the bread and he broke it, he flipped the script that day. He said, this is my body that is broken for you. See, it was supposed to be a picture of the lamb and how God made a Passover lamb. But see, John done said it a long time before. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which cometh to take away the sin of the world. Hey, I'm here to tell you, there is a lamb. He died for you. He died for me. I say, bless his holy name. I'm thankful that Jesus made a way for us. As he broke the strip, he changed the game. I'm going to preach for the next couple weeks on this thought, but I'll give you a little bit of taste this morning. He's a game changer. He walked out of that tomb that day, and he changed the game. All of a sudden, nothing would be the same anymore. There's some of us that are living in this room right now that you can remember where you were when Neil Armstrong stepped onto the, onto the moon. Uh, there's some of us that sit in this room, uh, we remember when the Berlin Wall fell. We remember in our mind where we were. When 9-11 happened, uh, you know what happened, you know where you were. That was a game changer in your life. Uh, can I say so 2,000 years ago? Jesus made the biggest game changer there's ever been. He's a name changer. Think about Saul. 
Saul was threatening to take out all the Christians. Then Jesus stepped in to where he was. Jesus found him in the middle of his mess. And he said, Saul, Saul, why are you doing this? It's hard for you to kick against the prince. And all of a sudden, things changed in Saul's life so much, Brother Ronnie, that they started calling him Paul. I said, he's a game changer. He's a game changer. He's a life rearranger. I find the one that's been blind. Find the one that's lame. Find the one that laid down the pool of the business for 38 years. His life was always the same. They've been waiting for the angel, waiting for something to happen. But then one day, Jesus showed up.
He said, I must need to go through Samaria. Because he knew that lady would be there. Can I say this? He knew you would be here today. God, in all of his infinite wisdom and glory, saw the eons of eternity. He saw you. He saw me. And today, he wanted me to tell you that he is a man changer. Amen. He can change your life. Preacher, how do you know that? Because he changed mine. Yeah. April 2nd, 1989, was on Easter. I had been going to a little church a little bit down in South Gastonia. And uh, my brother and I played some guitars with a group. And we started going to this church. God got to speak to me, Brother Ron. And I didn't really know how to be saved. I didn't know a, a whole lot about salvation. I kept hearing those preachers preach about Jesus was coming back. Man, I didn't want to get left behind. And I, I remember looking out my window at home. My neighbors across the road on both sides, they were Christians. They served the Lord faithfully. Sometimes I'd peek out my windows looking to see what was going on over there, making sure I didn't miss the rapture. And Brother Joel, that was Sunday night on the way home from church, God got to convict me. And I had a family that was driving the car. I was in the back seat. You've heard this before, 1987 Mazda 323. I was sitting, sitting in the back seat, and God sat down in the middle between me and my brother. And right about the cruiser's turnaround, God reached down and he turned my life around. That's been 30 years ago. And I wish I could tell you I hadn't failed him. I wish I could tell you I've done everything right. I wish I could tell you I've done everything I ought to do. Uh, but I have not. Brother Ken, if I can tell you this, he has. Uh, he's always been faithful. He's been everything he's been in me. Uh, I'm telling you what, he is a game changer. I want you to do this. Stand with me if you will. I wonder how many of us, some of us have prayed already. And it's fine to pray a few times around here. I wonder how many of us have come and find a place around these altars and say, God, thank you for changing my life. Thank you, God, that you've done something real in me. Come on, church. How many of us have just come and say, God, I thank you for Calvary. I thank you for the precious blood that was sent for me. I thank you that God, you rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave, and you did it for me. Lord, I want to tell you, thank you. I love you. Oh, God, bless you for blessing me. Thank you, God, for your help in my heart and your help in my life. Oh, God, speak to us in this hour. All these are coming to pray. Maybe you're here this morning and you just need the help of God. You know you're saved. There's a time in your life you can go back to, you know without a shadow of a doubt that God changed your life. With heads bowed and eyes closed. I wonder, maybe if you're here this morning and say, Preacher, I know I'm saved, but I need God's help in my life. How many of us just throw our hands up and be honest? I need the help of God. We've seen many going up. I know I'm saved, but I need God's help right now in my life. Thank you. The Lord knows your heart. The Lord sees those hands. You can put them right back down. Maybe you're here this morning and say, Yes, preacher, I do not know for sure that I'm saved. I do not know that. I can't go back to a place. I can't go back to a time that I know that I was redeemed. I've been born again. I do not know that. With heads bowed and eyes closed. I wonder if you just slip your hand up. Preacher, would you pray for me? I won't come to you, embarrass you, call you out. But I sure will pray for you. Is there somebody like that? Preacher, would you thank you? We see those. Thank you. We see those. Somebody else. Preacher, would you help me pray? I need the help of God. Is there anybody else in this place? Preacher, I need God's help. I do not know for sure. Thank you for being honest. I do not know for sure that I'm saved. Would you pray for me, preacher? Is there anybody else? 
I want to do this. If you raised your hand and said, Preacher, I know I'm saved, but I, I sure need God's help right now. I want to ask you to do something on purpose. I want you to slip out of your seat. I want you to come gather with the, the rest of these that are still in the office. I want you to, we're going to come and pray. Preacher, I know I'm saved, but I need the help of God. Come on. We're going to need some Christians that will come pray with some folk. Come on. I know I'm saved, but I need the help of God. I'm not where I need to be. I'm not where I'm supposed to be in my life with Christ. Oh, God. In Jesus' name. Oh, God, speak to hearts. Help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's get some men and some ladies that come pray with some of these folk. You're here this morning and say, Preacher, I'm not 100% sure that I'm saved. You were talking to me. I, maybe you raised your hand or maybe you didn't. Oh, God, here's my hand. Here's my heart lifted up to you. While these are coming to pray, heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Can I ask you to pray a prayer like this? Some 30 years ago, I prayed this prayer. And I meant it in my heart. God heard my prayer and changed my life. Dear Jesus, please forgive me. Come into my heart. Forgive me. Wash me. Make me new. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. I believe you rose again. Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and my Savior today. I take you. If you'll take me just as I am, I'll take you just as you are. Oh God, hear my prayer. Save me. With hands bowed and eyes closed, if you pray a prayer like that, and you meant it in your heart, or if you just slip your hand up, preacher, I prayed and I asked Jesus to be my Savior. Thank you. We see that. Is there somebody else, preacher, I prayed and I asked Jesus to be my Savior this morning. Here's my hand. I won't come to you, embarrass you, call you out. Is there anybody else, preacher, I prayed and I asked the Lord to be my Savior this morning. With hands bowed and eyes closed, if you raised your hand or maybe you didn't, I want to help you. I've got a book here. I'd love to have somebody pray with you right now. We can do it afterward, but I'd love to do it right now while the Lord's speaking to your heart. If you prayed that prayer, you raised your hand, or maybe you didn't, I want you to come and join me right here. We'll have somebody take a Bible, and they're going to come pray with you. Preacher, I ask Jesus to be my Savior this morning. I'm trusting Him as Christ. I'm trusting Him as Lord. Come on, join me right here. I want to be able to help you on and help you take some steps in following Christ in your life. Just a moment more. Jesus, speak to hearts. God, draw. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done.
just about a minute right there, right before we leave. I spoke, and I believe the Lord spoke to hearts this morning. And I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm, I'm going to be out in the foyer area on the front porch. God's speaking to your heart. Please don't leave this property. And not do business with him. I would, I would love to pull, pull aside somewhere and talk to you about what the Bible says about salvation. While God's dealing with your heart, be tender to him. Listen to him. He may never pass this way again. Let God speak to your heart. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done. Thank you for your... Thank you for the price that was paid. That we could be free. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. I bless you. Lord, have your will and have your way. Lord, be with us as we go. Speak to hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. How many of y'all enjoyed the time family today? Amen. They've got some material out there, some songs, and uh, I think uh, the oldest girls have some jewelry that's available. Uh, they, they mean that they travel all the time. They can't go to work at a job, and that, uh, help, that helps them uh, with that. And so if you want to pick something up like that up, you can do that. Let's, uh, let's do this. Fellas, y'all come on, uh, if you will. We're going to uh, receive our offering. And uh, I'm going to ask you, if you will, if you, if you got one of those first-time attender prayer cards, uh, if you will, take that by. We're going to have somebody back there um, at the uh, desk. And, and if you'll turn that in, uh, we've got a gift for you. We'd love to have you uh, take care of that. We've got some refreshments and all that. Um, and we'll talk to you about what's going to happen here. Uh, I, go ahead and stand up. Uh, I heard a preacher say a long time ago, if you stand, it's easier to get to your walk. So it is uh, Let's take this opportunity to worship the Lord and give it. And uh, fellas, if you will, make your way. Uh, what, what's given in this offering here uh, will be our regular tithe and offering and all that. If you've not had an opportunity to worship the Lord in giving, we're going to do that together, church family. Uh, let's be faithful in our giving. If you uh, are not able to do that today, but you would like to, uh, you can go to our website. You can uh, go to our, you can go on our Facebook page, and it will send you right to the app to be able to give online. Uh, you can do that through Tithely, and uh, that will be a real blessing. Uh, and fellas, when y'all get back to the back, uh, be sure they're listening there, Brother John. Um, we're going to take up a love offering for uh, Brother Sean, uh, Miss Lydia, the girls, and, and Brendan. And I uh, can't forget Brendan. Amen. Uh, he, he do a good job on that little song. Uh, uh, we're going to take that because a family like that, they don't have, they're not be able to have an Easter dinner. Uh, a family like that's going to take them a little bit of money to, to be able to eat something. Uh, they're, they're going to another church this evening. We're going to be starting revival, I think, in Monroe. Is that right? Albemarle. All right. And so uh, they'll be over there. Uh, but we want to be a blessing to them. So, fellas, if y'all will, take all the time and all that stuff and get that uh, put up in the office. And uh, and what you what you give on the way out, what you give on the way out will be a love offering for the town uh, family. And y'all got some people back there at the table already? Come in. Come in. Praise the Lord. Tell me all about it. We do have a brand new CD coming out. Should hit next month. What will it? If you like to pre order, it's $18 or $20 when it comes out. You can talk to my daughter about going to pay for it. Give us your address and, uh, and we'll get it to you. All right. Praise the Lord. And I know uh, you, they can use a card. They can, you got some stuff to do a card and all that. All right. And so be sure to keep that in mind. Uh, my wife, how many of y'all. Uh, Y'all couldn't figure out this is my wife. She's too pretty. I went to, we went to the grocery store the other day, and I was with her. Some, they, put a, they put one of them separators in between us. Thank you all for being patient with our children's ministry today. We're trying to get things uh, a little different. So, uh, 
with the check-in process and everything, but I appreciate your patience. Um, as far as the egg hunt, if you have a kid uh, that's going to be involved in the egg hunt that's in Children's Church or a kid that's going to be involved in it that's not in Children's Church today, we need all the parents, um, if you have your kids with you, go ahead and take them there in Children's Church, just go ahead over there. But Jennifer wants all the uh, parents to go in the building and just have a seat. I think there's some benches. In the fellowship hall. Right fellowship right hall. Down the hall. Where your kids are at. <laughs> and just stay there and let her give you instructions on what to do with your kids. Don't just pick them up. Just stay, stick around in there. So just go ahead and go over there and uh, get with your kid, match them up, and then we'll get started with the egg that she'll tell you what to do. All right, all right. Thank you. Uh, make your way.